Hey everybody, this is D Hunter, bringing another action figure review. Today, we're going to be looking at the McFarlane DC Multiverse Black Adam movie, Black Adam action figure. This is both the standard version and the version with the cloak on. Black Adam is played by Dwayne Johnson, and it's an upcoming movie set in the DC Cinematic Universe. I got these figures from the McFarlane Toy Store. They are in stock there right now. The likeness looks fantastic so far. So let's go and check out the packaging. As you can see at the top, 22 moving parts, McFarlane Toys, ages 12 plus, DC Multiverse, Black Adam, Black Adam. Here he's in the package. He's a couple of lightning energy effects, collector's card, and a display stand. One side of the package, Black Adam from Black Adam. Other side, someone says Black Adam at the bottom, but a bunch of credits, and there is a barcode in case that helps anybody. And on the back side, here's an image of Black Adam from the film, Dwayne Johnson. Then, of course, we have the version of the cloak on. This is when they first find him. Similar packaging, Black Adam with cloak. Here's his barcode. Now, I do notice on the back, it's an image of Black Adam, but it's not from the film. It's not the figure. It almost looks like a comic adaptation of the movie. So no further ado, let's open them up. And I got these figures and a lot of three figures from the McFarland Toy Store. I already had the other five from this wave. Now, this is checked off my list. All right, now that we got these figures out of the package, here they are with all their accessories laid out. They both come with a display stand and a collector's card. And then, the standard version of Black Adam, he's got two lightning energy effects. But before we take a look at the accessories, let's talk about and check out the actual figures. So these are both Black Adam figures. Black Adam is played by Dwayne Johnson in the upcoming Black Adam film. It's supposed to come out in late October. The figure on the left without the hood, that's how he's going to look through most of the film. And then the figure on the right, at least going to the trailer, that's how he appears when they first bring him out. A bunch of soldiers encounter him, and he takes them all out. Now Black Adam is sort of an anti-hero. He's often portrayed as a villain. His main goal is to keep his home country, Kandak, safe. Black Adam in general is pretty much an evil version of Shazam. He has the same type of powers. Of course, he's thousands of years old. I believe if he ever actually says Shazam, he'll just turn into dust and die. I believe that's correct, because he's so old, there would be nothing left. If I were to guess in the film, Black Adam's going to start off as a villain. He'll probably even end up fighting the Justice Society, and then they're going to have to team up to save Kandak. Just my guess. So let's take a look at him. Start with this one. The Dwayne Johnson likeness is amazing. They did such a good job here. Think back to Peacemaker or Bloodsport, the unmasked versions. They didn't look anything like the actors or the Ben Affleck Batman excellent job this looks better than Mattel wrestling figures and they do a pretty good job there you can see the lightning Shazam type logo the suit itself is a good amount of texturing you can see lots of wrinkles and lines different texture on the front part of the suit pants look very unique the belt sort of crisscrossed on there it's got two fisted hands double jointed elbows double jointed knees the gold boots, it all looks very good. And then of course, we have the version with the hood and the cloak. A lot more evil, can't see his face. A lot of darkness going on there. The sculpting is fantastic. It looks to be the same base buck body. Different hands, wonder if they're interchangeable. Of course, we've got this hood and cape on top. Although everything else, Pretty much looks to be the same. I noticed the boots are not gold on him. They're kind of black. They're gold on the other version. Nice trim around the cape here. Of course, he's going to have the double jointed elbows and knees as well. And then, just a closer look at the face and head sculpt from the unhooded Shazam. The likeness to Dwayne Johnson is incredible. Excellent job, McFarlane. They are definitely improving on certain things. And here's the head sculpt of the one with the hood on. You can't see the face too much. 
but it really works with the sort of mysterious and evil vibe to him when he first comes back. Now the hood is very far forward right now. You can barely see his face, but it has some give to it, made of a soft material. You can pull it back a bit, and it stays there, exposing his face. Now, you can't really pull it all the way back, but as you can see, the head is completely finished under there. It's not like they gave you part of his head. But you do have a couple of different options, the way you want to display the cloak. If you want to see his full face, or if you want to be a little more mysterious, like so. Now I wanted to point out one thing with his hands or wrists. They have the potential to look really bad, depending on how you pose them. Notice the bottom there, you see that joint, it looks hideous like that. Put the hand down about like that, it looks normal. Put it all the way down, it doesn't look nearly as bad at the top, but not super good. You just kind of got to find that sweet spot. His hands rotated, it can just look kind of unpleasant. Now let's take a look at his accessories, and let's start off with the boring stuff. They both come with this McFarlane display stand, typically McFarlane stand. Black perfect circle, it says DC on the bottom, it's got one peg for the peg holes on their feet, it's very thin, very basic. Now let's take a look at his collector's cards. The one on the left came with the hero version of Black Adam, and the one on the right with the hooded version. As you can see, it's an image of Black Adam, Dwayne Johnson from the film, Black Adam from Black Adam on the back. There is a description if you want to read that. Go ahead and pause now. And we have the other card. This is sort of an artist rendition of Dwayne Johnson's Black Adam. Black Adam with cloak for Black Adam. And it has the same description on the back. Now we've got these energy effects for his hands. It's going to sort of simulate lightning or energy coming out of him. They're cast in a semi-transparent yellow type plastic. You can see it looks like lightning and it's going to wrap around his wrists here. I'm pretty sure these accessories are complete reuse from McFarland's Mortal Kombat line. Here they are, next to some similar energy blasts that came with Raiden. I don't think I've ever actually seen them use a Mortal Kombat accessory in the DC line. It makes perfect sense though. Here's Black Adam using the energy effects. They fit around his wrist perfectly. And both versions of Black Adam can utilize these accessories. They fit perfect with the cloaked version as well. Now those are the only traditional accessories either figure comes with. But I was curious, since the unhooded version of Black Adam has two fists and the hooded version has two open hands, if you could hand swap them. So I'm gonna heat up some water and pop their hands out. So I took a cup of water, brought it to a boil, and dipped these figures in there. I was able to pop the hands out no problem, and I'm sure they're going to be able to be interchangeable. You do have to heat them up and soften the plastic. They don't come out easily by themselves, room temperature. The hands look exactly the same. They're going to match for both figures. It's not like one has black armor and the other one has gold armor. They'll be interchangeable, seamless, no problem. So it does work just fine. You can heat them up, swap out their hands. A little bit more inconvenient than having interchangeable hands for each figure, but it can work if you really want to have them like this. Now I wanted to check out the reuse between these two figures and what exactly the differences were. So obviously their hands are different, but I'd say besides that, it's 100% the same figure, except the cloaked version has this cape and cloak attached. The head, the torso, the arms, the legs, it's all 100% the same. Other differences, this guy has gold on his armor, gold on his belt, gold on his forearm armor. But they made two badass figures, pretty much by using the same buck. Now they've taken a pretty good look at both the figures and their accessories. Now let's check out their height. So the version with no cloak on, he's standing about 7.2 inches tall, which can translate to about 18 centimeters. And then the cloak version, about 7.3 inches tall. Now let's check out their articulation, and it should be pretty much identical. The only difference is going to be this guy's head is going to have a much smaller range of motion as the cloak is going to be obstructing that. So let's start off with this guy's head. Of course, it's going to rotate from side to side. He can look up that far, which is very impressive, down that far. can't tilt his head from one side to the other. 
giving him a good amount of personality. Shoulders on a ball joint. Goes up more than 90 degrees, up, down, around, all that good stuff. He's got this butterfly joint between his shoulder and chest area, increasing the range of motion and covering up that gap. Bicep cut below that. Double jointed elbows, they go all the way in. His wrist can rotate, and it's going to be hinged. He's got ball joint his torso, rotate around, forward and back. Another ball joint his waist, rotate around, forward and back, giving him a very wide range of motion his torso area. Legs, complete dose of splits, not a ball joint, but a similar type of concept. Rotation is minimal. His legs, I only go forward about that far, back, not too much. Double jointed knees, then his ankle here, forward and back, rotate, tilt, rock, and toe articulation. And just a side note on the hooded guy's head's articulation. So, you can actually still rotate it around. You can even completely spin the head 360 degrees. And it's going to be a different head. As you can see, the neck is probably attached to the head. The articulation is deeper down inside of there. It actually can move around a pretty decent amount, all things considered. Here's Black Adam flying up in the skies above the rooftops. And here he is in the air flying and using his powers at the same time. Here are both versions of Black Adam hovering in the sky using their powers. Here are a bunch of soldiers searching around this temple. They're looking for evidence of Black Adam. They should be careful what they wish for. All of a sudden he's right there in the middle. He ends up grabbing one of the soldiers by the throat, lifts him in the air and disintegrates him. Then all the soldiers pull out their guns they have them trained on Black Adam and start firing. Black Adam hovers in the air, uses his powers, and takes out all the soldiers at once. For this next scene, we're going to move to a city setup in the city streets. Here's the Justice Society of America meeting up. They're discussing the Black Adam situation. Enter Black Adam. He arrives in the city streets. And here's the JSA, ready for action. All pulling out their weapons, ready to go. I imagine... In the movie, when they first find Black Adam, it's going to lead to a big battle. And then, by the end of the movie, they will have joined forces to save the world. They'll presumably be teaming up to take on Sabacc, save the world, and Kandak. Now let's check them out. Next to some other action figures. Starting off with some other McFarlane DC Multiverse figures. And we will check them out with a bunch of other Dwayne Johnson The Rock Wrestling figures. We'll see just which one has the best likeness. Here are these two movie Black Adam figures, next to the Justice League Endless Winter Black Adam. It's a pretty traditional comic Black Adam. There's also the Page Puncher Black Adam coming up soon. I'm expecting to get that the next few days. Here are these figures, next to the rest of the 7 inch scale figures from the Black Adam movie wave. Cyclone, Dr. Fate, Black Adam, Hawkman, and the Atom Smasher. And here they are, next to the mega figures from this wave, Atom Smasher and Sabacc. And here's the entire wave of McFarland DC Multiverse Black Adam figures. There are a total of eight figures here. I've seen some rumors that we're going to get a Black Adam vehicle. I personally have even seen a shelf tag for it at Target a long time ago. Seems to share the same number as the Batman Bat Cycle. And since we're clearing those out right now, looks like maybe they're making room for the new wave of vehicles. Here they are, next to the infected Shazam. McFarland hasn't made a regular Shazam, although rumor is there's an upcoming gold label Shazam, which I'm assuming is going to be some sort of regular version of Shazam. We definitely need Shazam to take on this Black Adam. Here are all of my Shazam type characters from McFarland. We have the Page Puncher one upcoming, the rumored gold label Shazam, and then you know they're going to make figures for Shazam 2. Here are these Black Adam figures, next to McFarland's figures from the Suicide Squad. The Suicide Squad also exists in the DC Cinematic Universe, so it's possible these characters could potentially interact with each other. Then, next to McFarlane's Zack Snyder's Justice League figures. Zack Snyder's Justice League also exists in the DC Cinematic Universe. I would love to see Henry Cavill's Superman take on Dwayne Johnson's Black Adam. And here they are, next to Harley Quinn from Birds of Prey. Birds of Prey was also part of the shared universe, and this is the only figure they made for that film. And now, Next to the Wonder Woman 1984 figures, Wonder Woman is also in that shared universe. 
Now, the DC Cinematic Universe is not the only live-action incarnation that McFarland has made figures from. Here are these Black Adam figures next to Arrow and Flash from CW's Arrowverse. McFarland also made figures from the recent movie, The Batman. The Batman, just like CW's Arrowverse, is completely unrelated from the DC Cinematic Universe. Now let's check them out. Next to some other recent released McFarland DC Multiverse figures. Here they are, next to the two most recent mega figures, at least before the Black Adam wave. This is Killer Croc and Man Bad. Then, with the Blackest Night wave, collect a build, Atrocitus. Here they are, next to the Target exclusive gold label Lex Luthor in Superman Power Suit, and the Batman Who Laughs dressed as Batman. Then, next to the McFarland Toy Store exclusive gold label Unmasked Cernar Batman and Unmasked Infinite Frontier Robin, and here, next to the Target exclusive Crime Syndicate Ultraman and Superwoman, and now, next to the Batman vs. Hush 2 pack, then, Next to the single release of Hush. And here they are. Next to Ghostmaker. Then, next to the Tim Drake Red Robin and the John Kent Superboy. Here's Black Adam. Next to Grifter and the Arkham Knight. Then, next to the TV Flash and the comic Godspeed. And here they are. Next to the most recent video game figures. Injustice 2's Green Arrow and Reverse Flash. And finally, here they are next to the Walmart-exclusive Wally West Flash and the Walmart-exclusive All-Gold Anti-Crisis Wonder Woman. Here they are, next to the Mattel DC Multiverse movie version of Shazam. Like I said before, Shazam and Black Adam have got to meet up. I hope there's some kind of Easter egg at the end of the film. Maybe Black Adam sees something on the news about Shazam saving somebody and he's really curious and wants to go meet him, leading up to maybe Shazam 3. Now let's check him out. Next to some of their Dwayne Johnson figures. Here he is, next to a few different Mattel WWE Elite Dwayne Johnson The Rock figures. Which head sculpt do you think is better? They're actually both very nice, but I'm gonna have to give it up to McFarlane. It looks a lot more convincing to me. Then, next to some Mattel WWE Basic Rock figures. Here they are, next to all my different Dwayne Johnson The Rock wrestling figures. And I guess. This Fortnite Foundation figure is also sort of a Dwayne Johnson figure. When he took his helmet off in the game, The Rock is the guy that voiced and played him. Here are all the different Dwayne Johnson figures I have in my collection. I can't think of any other characters they've made figures of him from. If there's anything I'm not aware of, drop me a line in the comments below. I'm mildly curious. Now let's check them out. Next is some action figures from different various companies to see how they fit in, both scale and style-wise, in case you want to know which lines you can mix them with. Since they're McFarland figures, they're typically the 7-inch scale. I'm going to start off my comparisons with some of the large action figure lines I collect, and work way smaller. But first, we're going to check them out with some of their McFarland Toys brothers. In front of you are five different action figure lines, all from McFarland Toys, all 7-inch scale. Then, next is more McFarland Toys. These are from different various video game properties. And now, with some Jack specific wrestling figures. And here they are. Next to some DST or Diamond Select toys. Then, next to some DC Direct and DC Collectibles figures. And here, with some NECA figures. Then, next to some Mattel wrestling figures. And now, with some Jazzwares AEW wrestlers. And here they are. Next to some Mezco 112 collective figures. Then, next to some Mattel DC Universe Classics and Multiverse figures. And here, with some Mafex figures. Then, with some Hasbro Marvel Legends. And here they are, next to some SH Figure Arts action figures. And finally, next to some Jazz Wars Fortnite figures. Overall, these are some pretty nice figures. The likeness is absolutely phenomenal. McFarlane has come a long way since that Ben Affleck, Zack Snyder's Justice League Batman, or Peacemaker, or Bloodsport. Their likenesses were horrible. Sculpt and paint job are excellent, no issues there. Articulation is everything you'd expect from a McFarland DC Multiverse figure, and they did a pretty good job of making sure the hood was articulated. Accessories, kind of on the weak side. Only one of the two figures came with any character-specific accessories. It would have been nice if they both came with some fists and some open hands. And they definitely should have both come with some of the Shazam energy effects. But that being said, these are some fantastic figures. They feel very sturdy. They look great. 
and they're only $20. If I were to rate these guys, I'm going to give them both about an 8 out of 10. For a character that I'm not that into, Black Adam, these guys are some home runs by McFarlane. So this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you liked the video, press like below. If you have anything you want to say about the video, add to the comment section. If you want to see additional action figure reviews from me, press subscribe. I do appreciate it when you do that. Once again, this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video, and I'll talk to you guys real soon.